Struggling with prayer life, Bible study, or just difficulty making that life-changing decision? We are here to help. Contact the Footprints Counseling and Prayer Teams at the West Jamaica Conference. Give us a call at 876-656-7823 or send us a WhatsApp message at 876-373-2390. Connect with us as we walk with Jesus to the next level. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday. Of course, it is Wonderful Wednesday right here at the Footprints of Hope 3.0, walking with Jesus to the next level. Indeed, I am your host, Denise Lawson Leslie, alongside... Marion Barrett Pop. Oh, here. yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And we are off to a wonderful start. We thank you for joining us, whether you're joining us on YouTube, Facebook, WCCN, or Bless TV. We are elated to have you. And remember, be the minister of the gospel and share that link. That's right. So if you haven't yet done so, please do it right now. Remember to invite your friend Invite another friend, share the link with family and friends and neighbors and everyone. And Denny's, we have our praying segment, our praying time, right? Indeed so. That's 6 a.m. Right, and 12 noon. And 6 p.m. So be sure to join us and pray on the hour, 6 a.m., 12 noon and 6 p.m. Amen, amen. And remember to share your prayer requests in the chat. We have our prayer team that is petitioning the throne of God, of God on your behalf. So send those prayer requests in the chat right now. And whether we're ever in the world you're joining us from, we thank you for joining us. And we want you to put in the chat the, in the place where you're joining us from. And for those in Western, West Jamaica Conference area, that is Hanover. Westmoreland. Of course, St. James. James. And St. Elizabeth. We are delighted to have you. And where, whether you are in a church building or under the open skies or in a bar, outside a shop like Merle's shop at Sunderland, we are delighted to have you. And we're grateful for those who are providing electricity services oh, for these yes. sites. Oh, yes. Definitely welcome. So. And if you are in the deaf community, we welcome you as well. Most definitely. So without further ado, we are going to now going to be handing you over to our praise team so that you can sing along with us and be blessed. But before we do so, let us pray. Sister, That's right. Please. Let's pray. Our Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to lift your name on high, to share the good news of your soon return. We pray that your Holy Spirit will direct our hearts and direct your truths to hearts so that souls will be drawn to you in commitment and recommitment. Accept the worship we bring now before we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night, everyone. As we know, this evening is Wednesday evening, and we are used to having our prayer service on a Wednesday evening. We want to change the dynamics just a little bit, so we invite you to join us as we sing together these wonderful hymns. Sound the battle cry. See the foe is nigh. Raise the standard high for the Lord. Sound the battle cry, see the foe is thy reign. Shout aloud, Hosanna, Christ is left in 
Now, as we sing together our theme song, Footprints of Hope. Oh 
praise God. We want to talk to our great sovereign God. He's always hearing our prayers. So at this time, I invite you, wherever you are, to join in prayer as we lift our collective voices and thoughts to him. Shall we pray? Eternal God and Father, we are so thankful to you tonight for your goodness and your mercies extended to us today. We thank you for the moving power of your Holy Spirit upon this program since we started. And we believe that tonight you will be moving, not just on the speaker, but you'll be moving on the communication team, on the singers. You'll be moving on every instrument. You'll be moving in every lane, every street, every community. You'll be moving upon every site, in every church. We ask you now, O oh thou sovereign God, help us to feel your moving power. We submit ourselves to you. We submit this program to you. We submit the speaker to you, your servant, your mouthpiece. We ask you that you will place on him a brand new, fresh anointing, the anointing oil of your Holy Spirit. And may tonight be a night of deliverance. May tonight be a night of victory. May tonight be a night where somebody, somewhere, will surrender completely to the moving power and the moving unction of your Holy Spirit. Have now your own way as we say thank you, Jesus, for what we are about to experience. We ask this in the mighty, powerful name of Christ and the church together say Amen. amen. Amen indeed. Amen indeed. We are looking forward to something very special tonight. Good evening, saints of God. I hope you've had a fantastic day. And we want to say a very special welcome to all worshipers tonight. We are expecting a special outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. To those who are online, I say to you, welcome, 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 Pastor. Uh, to those of our Overseas partners from Lighthouse, South Brooklyn, Palm Spring, Stuyvesant. I want to extend a very special welcome to you all. And then we have, have there are so many sites, Pastor. I, I, everybody calling, uh, uh, mention Lakovia, mention Catabo, oh, yes. mention oh, this. Yes. There I, are I tell over you something. 160 oh, community yes. sites and over 60 church sites that make it over 220 something, 30 something sites. That is uh, indeed uh, right. tremendous. And we want to welcome the, them from the parish of um, St. James. And St. Elizabeth. Uh, and, and, and Westmoreland. And Hanover. And the parish of Hanover. Please say Hanover again. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, My welcome. parish and Tucker Indeed. and Lilliput and all these sites. We want to welcome you in a very special way. And trust and hope that tonight will be an extra special night of worship that God's Holy Spirit will indeed fall uh, on all of us. And, and even as we say welcome, Pastor, we are saying to those who are at the sites, be it here or elsewhere, make sure that at the next meeting you take somebody else with you. Oh, yes. Oh, because yes. Because that's the objective. That's really the objective. Uh, so, 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 preacher, I tell you what. There are some quick reminders. Mm -hmm. I know you have gifts. That's I know right. You have that's gifts. right. That's right. I know you have gifts and gifts are on. But there are some quick reminders. I want to remind Request the, the prayer lines will be yes. um, on screen shortly. Make those call. So it's prayer, 
We have counseling line. Co counseling yeah, line. Yes, yes. We are still registering for heart right here. So we, we, let, let me tell us something. And the heart program begins on February 6th. That's correct. I, I was told. And, uh, All right. So, so we look forward to um, your involvement in these activities. A quick reminder to Pastor yes. Rose that this coming Sunday, especially those who are in the Montego Bay Basin, in yes. the Granville Glendevon, Mount Salem, Harrison, Flank, all these areas. Um, there's a special health clinic that will be conducted here under the big tent. We'll have all the and many health personnel mm. who will be here to assist you in the health clinic. And we look forward to um, the impact it will yes. have on the individuals. Indeed, indeed. And as we have said before, uh, please make your way right here uh, every evening. Uh, the, the, the bus, there's a bus that leads from Corner Courts. There's one from Glen Devon. Right. And I tell you something, we, we want you to serve the Lord. And so we have made every preparation for you to, to make it to this place. Now tonight, I want to give out a gift very quickly, Pastor. Yeah. I, I, and guess what? I'm going to do a simple one tonight. If you are a visitor and you are here, yes, you have got to be here to get my gift tonight. And you were born in the very best month of the year. What is that month again? February, that's right? The of, that, that's the month that we are in now. That's the month of oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I tell you, is there a visitor? You were born in the month of February. I have a special gift for you right here, right now. February, from February 1, I, 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 I see a February and, and I tell you, Oh, you were, you're born February 30th? February 14th. 14. All right. All right. Oh, and you are a visitor. Valentine's. And you are a visitor. Uh, all right. I'm going to ask the ushers quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. I, uh, they, they, I, 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 yeah, they, February P. I, was February born, people. I have to be born in February. Yeah, yeah that's true. You're the, <laughs> he was born the 31st of February. Let's go. We, um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And so... Let's give them a hand. Let's, um, you, a visitor also, sis. Visitor. All right, all right. And so I am making it very special. Thanks again. See you tomorrow evening when once again we will share with you our very special gifts. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome. Of Seventh Adventist. We welcome you if you're just joining us. Of course, so the Footprints of Hope, Part 3, Walking with Jesus to the Next Level. Indeed. It's an awesome time, eh? Awesome, awesome, awesome time. And right now, we're going to be going over to the Foster Triplet. I know that you have been hearing them, and they have been blessing your hearts. So once again, they will thrill your soul this evening. Over to the Foster Triplets. Your heart may be battered and torn. Your circumstance may look dim, but I'm thankful that we have a God that can take care of any circumstance you face. Mm -hmm. So your town looks like your pain will never this scene has played before only this time you are weaker than before oh, friends all gone no job and your family's your enemy this seems like deja vu, only this time it hurts deeper than before. Don't lose faith, don't lose hope. My God is listening when you call, and he will catch you if you fall. Wipe your tears away Believe me when I say He will come through for you He will come through for you
is listening when you call. He will catch you if you fall. He will heal. Wipe your tears away. Believe me when I say He will come through for I'm so thankful that my God not been broken who here among us is without guilt or pain so abandoned by all transgressions if such a thing as grace exists then grace was made for lives like this
Ladies and gentlemen, you will discover that we are having some technical issues. Our engineers are working feverishly to eliminate the issues that we are having, and we ask you to pray that uh, the devil will be proven again to be a liar. For those individuals who are interested in the, in the HEART program, for the assessments on February uh, 26, food and beverage, housekeeping, cosmetology, and uh, customer service, uh, on March 5, plumbing, tiling, steel fixing, carpentry, painting. If you're interested in any of these certifications, please call the number 553 Five nine nine nine. That's eight seven six five five three five nine nine nine. And also, we wanted to know that the registration is still open for all the other areas we have spoken about. There's a WhatsApp number eight seven six, the same number five five three five nine nine nine. Or you can go to www.footprintswestjamaica.org. Uh, and you go and go to outreach application form. It is at this moment usually when we uh, give you the opportunity of expressing your attitude of gratitude. And so we collect our offering, facilitating your thankfulness to God for what he has done for you. Loving Father, again we pray that you'll bless the givers, we pray that those who have financial gifts, that you'll bless them. Those who were once walking with us and have returned, we thank you for them. May we all give our hearts completely to you in response to the message tonight, we pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen, amen. Even as you uh, give your offering, at this time we'll be talking to God in prayer. We believe there is power in prayer. And so we are pausing at this segment for hope at the mercy seat. I have with me Sister Carol Smythe James, who will be mentioning a few of the names that are in the chat, so a few of the requests that are in the chat. And then we will both pray uh, short prayers to lift these up along with the, those of you who are watching at the various sites. Sister Smythe James. Thank you very much. Well, I see in the chat, uh, Shari is asking prayer for my daughter, my son, and dad to accept Jesus soon and pray for healing for Ryan and Denise. And Pastor, there are so many in the chat, and I know mm -hmm. that as we even think of them, we know that God hears and answers prayer. Amen. And we see that Lorraine Spencer in the pray, you know, that I will continue to trust God all the time, and also the uh, illness. And we won't be able to mention all parts, but we no, see the request right. for the family members and friends. Yes, yes. And indeed, we'll continue to pray for them. And Sister West, East Lynn West, we see the prayer as you ask a prayer for your family as well, that the Lord will give you strength to go through. Amen. All right, let us pray. Father, we chart in heaven. We want to thank you for loving us and dying for us. We thank you for all the persons who are here we thank you for the requests that they have, maybe unspoken ones, those who have written yes. them in the chat, even with Shari, who is asking for a breakthrough for, so that her son and daughter and father can accept you. Those who are asking for prayer for their siblings, their relatives, I pray that you will do a mighty work. We know that you want to save. And because you want to save everyone, yes. we present them in your hands. There are many who are sick, both spiritually and physically. We thank you that you are the greatest physician. Yes. You are the sympathizing Jesus. I pray that tonight you will put a double portion on Pastor Samuels so that as he preaches the message, it will penetrate hearts so that person can say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes. Continue to be with all of us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, we just pause a little while longer to appreciate your power, to appreciate your presence. We are grateful for the successes that this campaign has met thus far. For those who are coming to the various sites, for those who are providing us electricity from all the different sites across this conference, for those who are putting their requests in the chat, 
Lord, we are asking that your Holy Spirit will respond to these messages, respond to these heart cries, and that these prayers will come up to your presence as sweet-smelling incense. Lift up your children, empower them, extend your mercy and your grace, cover each sight under your precious blood, we ask. That as individuals surrender their hearts to you, as they listen to your word, that they will secure their connection with you until eternity. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, the word of God says that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world yes. for a witness, and then shall the end come. Amen. The moment has arrived for us to hear again the good news of salvation. And God's vessel is ready. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to introduce to you the president of West Jamaica Conference and the speaker for the Footprints of Hope, part three, walking with Jesus to the next level, yes. Pastor Glenn O. Samuels. But before he comes to us. However, before he comes, we will be having the foster triplets as they bless your hearts. And we also want to remind you that we have our VIP room tonight, Alan. Right. Yes, we have our VIP room tonight. So we encourage you to log on as well. So without any other ado, we're going to be uh, passing you over at this time to the foster triplets. heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I'm clean. Yes, I am. The cross he carried bore my burden. The nails that held him set me free.
struggling with prayer life, Bible study, or just difficulty making that life-changing decision? We are here to help. Contact the Footprints Counseling and Prayer Teams at the West Jamaica Conference. Give us a call at 876-656-7823 or send us a WhatsApp message at 876-373-2390. Connect with us as we walk with Jesus to the next level. Prepare your hearts right now for what God has in store for you. And remember, someone else out there needs to know the word of the Lord. So share that link right now. Right, Alan? That's right. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The anointed ones will pave the way with a beautiful song of meditation for the anointed one who will speak to us tonight.
say amen. I worship only at the feet of Jesus. Just Jesus only will never fail. Some worship at the shrine of pleasure. Some worship at the shrine of material possession. Some worship at the shrine of connections with what they deem to be significant. But the only worship that can sustain us in times like these is the worship of the living God. I want to welcome you this evening to another Wednesday evening, the second Wednesday evening of the Footprints 3 series. And I'm going to give you a few moments to look in your own uh, friend circle, check on your uh, Instagram, uh, your WhatsApp, your whatever connecting link you have, wherever you keep your friends. And I'm going to give you a few moments just to check if they are where you are. You are online with me tonight. And I want to make sure that your friends are where you are in the virtual space where you are at. So let me give you a chance right now to make sure that if you have not yet shared tonight's link with somebody, if you have not yet connected with your friends for uh, being online, if you are at 
one of these outdoor sites and you have not yet looked around, look around where you're at and see who's missing. See who was there with you last evening. See who's missing from your circle tonight. And I want to take a few moments, and don't worry, I'll send you home by 8.30. I want to take a few minutes out of my time to ask you to connect. Take, take, I, I, can, I can let you off for, for two minutes, see, as long as you're going to skip from me to call somebody to say, hey, listen, he, uh, it's time for the word and you can't miss tonight's word. So let me give you two minutes. Uh, you can skip from me to make sure you call at least five persons in the two minutes. Tell them, tell them you send the link. Share it with them and tell them, tell them it's time to join. Tell them it's time to join. If you're sitting in your living room and your husband is, is someplace, call them on the inside. Tell them, come on in, come on in. Tell them you'll rub their shoulder, you'll rub their foot, you'll rub their back, you'll, you'll rub anywhere way that needs rubbing as long as they come and sit beside you to watch the word tonight. I'm just wanting you to know there's a word coming your way tonight and you can't miss it. There's a word from God tonight. There's a word, there's a word, there's a word tonight for somebody who may not now be on. So let me ask you to, to look around and, and, and to check on your group and to check if they're on and, and by now your two minutes are just about up. Well, 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 I want to tell you that this coming Friday evening, as I told you last Friday evening, last Friday evening we spoke about Revelation's first invitation. I told you then that this Friday evening I'll be talking to you about Revelation's final invitation. And by now you know I keep my word. So last Friday evening we spoke about Revelation's first invitation. This Friday evening, we shall be talking about Revelation's final invitation. Then on Sabbath, if you, if you were here last week, you would know if you didn't come early, you wouldn't get a seat inside this place. So here's what, and I see my visiting friend nodding her head. And so, so here's what I'm going to ask all my visitors. I, I should have done something this evening, but I had forgotten. Forgive the old man. There's so many things in his head. I should have had a card prepared uh, called the Sabbath Celebration Registration Card. I'll make sure that on Friday evening, we have it for you. So when you come on Friday evening, I want to give you, if you are a visitor, hear me carefully, I want to give you a ticket. You collect it by the registration desk or the... Uh, the, the persons, the pastors will give you because I want to make sure that we reserve enough seats for you. But if you take too long to come, if you get here after 11, I can't guarantee your seat. I may have to give it away. In addition to your seat, I want to make sure that at least one dumpling gets in your plate on Sabbath coming. I want to make sure that they put a plate. Because if you're going to spend the whole day with me, the least I can do is to make sure you get at least one dumpling. Huh? If you're going to spend the whole day with me, the least we could do is make sure you don't starve while you're listening to me. So make sure that when you come tomorrow, you pick up from the registration desk a little ticket and you keep it with you. Because when it comes to a large crowd in this place, I want to make sure that all of our visiting friends are cared for first. Is that all right? Now, if I were a gambler, I would say, if you don't have a ticket, who tell you so? <laughs> you shouldn't know that. But just in, since you say it, then let me borrow it from you. I want to make sure that as long as you have your ticket, you have a chance. You have a chance to make sure that year. Then I want to thank the health team. Last evening, I saw them busy. I bumped into one nurse and told her thanks. On behalf of our health director, Pastor Grant, thank you all to our nurses and our doctors for uh, being here in the evenings to do blood pressure check and blood sugar check. And uh, we're going to be helping you to understand that some, I think it's either this Sunday or the next one, we'll be having some doctors here and some nurses to be able to relate to you. And we shall be telling you more about that. It's now 7.29 and I want to send you home at 8.29. It's time for us to get to the word. But I have one last request to ask of you. This coming... Friday evening will be the last night 
before the baptism on Sabbath. There's a war going on. There's a battle going on. And I want to ask you, our praying friends, whether you are here in this place or you are joining us in the virtual space, I want to ask you on Friday morning to take two hours out of your time and join me in even two hours of fasting and prayer. I'll be doing it for most of Friday, but I want to ask you if you would be kind enough if you can't go for a half day on Friday, if you can join me for just two hours, put aside whatever it is that you normally eat between, let us say, eight and 10, and join me in those two hours. You're denying yourself of food or drink, and you're focusing. I want to ask you to ask God to be especially with us on the weekend. There are decisions to be made for eternal salvation. There are people who are struggling with that issue. There are backsliders listening to me right now who need to come back to Jesus. There are those of us with whom the devil is so busy. We need a special help from Almighty God. And I want to ask you, if 100,000 of you around the world could join me in prayer and interceding at the mercy seat, then I believe that God will hear from heaven and he'll do something special. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we've come one more time to this meaningful moment, this moment, God, that needs more than a sinful human being can supply. This moment needs more than what I still does boy can bring to this podium. I'm just a sinful, wretched lump of miserable, mortal clay. I'm just God one you describe in your own word whose righteousness is just like filthy rags. And I stand tonight and ask and beseech and intercede at the mercy seat that the blood of Jesus Christ will be applied one more time, that the Holy Ghost will visit us in this place, in every site across all of these sites, in this country and outside this country, in the Caribbean and across continents and islands glorify your name and fulfill your divine purpose in the proclamation of the everlasting gospel this is our asking and yea even more in Jesus name and let God's children say amen I have 58 minutes to keep my word to you tonight our subject is do you hear what I heard have you heard have you heard uh, oftentimes when when, when somebody rushed to you with the phrase, have you heard? It is usually that they're coming with some gossip. And it's not just women who gossip. It's bad enough when they do, but sometimes men, unfortunately, fall prey to that stuff. And so, what, have you heard? And sometimes when you ask, heard what? Ah, it's some juicy stuff that they're sharing. There's a Christmas song that, that I use. It asks the question, do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? Have you heard? And I know you're asking, what are you talking about, preacher? What are you talking about? It's, it's interesting it, and it's important that, that you learn to listen Carefully. Sometimes it may not work out in your best interest if you don't listen. History is replete with the bleach bones of men and women, boys and girls, who didn't take the time to listen. 
As a boy, they, they play this game, you may have played it too, where they tie, I don't know if words can travel on strings. I never played the game at school. They get two empty cans, tie a string, uh, and, and they would be talking, and, and they expect you to hear. But the one that's fascinating is, is you line up 20 persons and you whisper something to the one at number one. By the time it gets to person number 20, it's a completely different story. And you wonder where along the middle the conversation changed. You wonder where along the middle that it changes. God is a great communicator. But somewhere in the middle, what he said is not what some persons are hearing. And yet God can't be faulted because he's made sure that it's written in the word. So I ask you tonight, have you heard? I want to cover three points tonight. Number one, have you heard what God is saying. Have you heard what God has said? Number two, if you are hearing, do you understand what God is saying? Number three, if you have heard, if you are hearing, and if you do understand, the third point I want to deal with, what are you doing about it? Have you heard what God is saying? Number two, if you're hearing what God is saying, whether you're in church or out of church, do you understand what God has said, what God is saying? Number three, if you hear it, if you understand it, what are you doing about it. And if I have an extra minute before I get to 829, I may make the statement from the word that it is dangerous to hear God and not obey him. If I have the time when I get down there, I'd like to make the point and challenge you in church and out of church to know this. It is dangerous to hear the voice of God and not obey. So we go tonight to the last book of the Bible. You see, before I get to Revelation's final invitation, I've got to cover some stuff in between the first invitation and the last invitation. Now turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, come on, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you heard? That was the wrong neighbor. That, was a wrong, that neighbor is hard of hearing. So, so, so turn to a next neighbor Make sure you get that neighbor's attention and say, neighbor. Now, I want you to turn to the neighbor right beside her. I have my eyes on you and you're not talking to you. Here are two neighbors not talking to each other. So let me give you something to make sure you can. There's no money skipping in the house tonight. So, so you go say, neighbor, I'm looking at you now. Neighbor, have you heard? Now I know you're talking to your neighbor. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 14. Where am I heading? Revelation, the 14th chapter. And I want to pick it up at verse 6. Revelation 14. And, and, I, and I want to ask you to, to write it down. Write it down and, and walk with me. Write it down and walk with me. Walk with me. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. We're going to the 14th chapter. And we want to begin. And it would do the old man's heart a lot of good to hear you read the word with me. And while you're looking for it, last evening... We, we, we had our VIP room, and I must confess, there were the board, both boards were filled with persons who wanted to call, but I couldn't talk to them all. And so tonight again, as I get done, I'll just go wash my greasy face, and I'll come right back to see you in the place, so I hope I can hear from you. I want to hear what God's Word is doing to you. I want to hear from you, uh, especially those who want to come back to Christ. If you're struggling with the decision, I want to hear from you tonight. If you're once a member of the church, and the devil drag you out. I want to hear from you in the VIP room. Look out for the information uh, before we get done and I'll see you in the place. 
Revelation 14 and verse 6. Listen to me carefully. I never said verse 6. I said verse 6. It's important. So this old man went, went to the doctor. What, what, what man I say? Did I say? I, no, this old man went to the doctor. He has kidney problems. He has liver problems. He has all kind of problems. He has age problems. And he had a heart murmur. So the doctor said to him, you have a heart murmur. And with all your conditions, be careful. You have a heart murmur, so be careful. It was a young doctor who wasn't a Christian. And so the young doctor went to a party with young people. And guess who he saw at the party? You guessed it right. The old man. And bless, hear me carefully, not only was he at a young people's party, but he had a young damsel, almost one third his age, on his arm. And the doctor couldn't help it. The doctor walked up to him and said, man, what are you doing here? What happened? He said, doctor, you told me to get a hot mama and be cheerful. So I got me a hot mama and I'm cheerful. Oh, he may die an uncheerful death. Are you listening to me? So, so I said, Revelation 14, I was just giving you time to find it, don't you know? And verse 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Could you read it again with me? And I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the, don't miss that, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, to every kindred, to every tongue, to every people. The next verse said, saying, the angel is saying, uh, the angel is saying, and, and he's saying with a loud voice. I went to a certain country that shall remain nameless to preach in a certain place where they didn't look like me. The only black person in there was my friend and I. And the pastor, knowing his culture, came up to me and he said, the first thing he said, number one, sir, if you're in here until after 12, you may be the only one in here. Number two, here we speak in conversational tones. I don't know what conversational tones mean, but I did try Having watched him in the beginning, I said, well, if that's what conversational tones mean, well, at least let me try it. But you know me. I can't be anybody else but myself. My head is too big to be anybody else. And so I did try to speak in conversational tones. But after five minutes, something said, I still just, boy, that's not like you. And I heard a voice in my head saying, cry aloud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show the house of Israel what I ask you to tell them. And I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Watch the use of the definite demonstrative adjective pointing out the particular nature of the kind of gospel that God wants for this last age. God does not want a sugar-coating, friend-loving gospel. Listen to me. Yes, I would want you to be my friend, but if telling you the truth go make you my enemy, I'd rather be a friend of God. In times like these, 
years. We are too close to the second coming of Jesus. And sometimes I've got to preach to me to straighten me out. And what you hear is just the overflow after I've preached to me. Are you listening to me? Because I can't preach to you and lose my soul. And I go to the word to find a word for me first. Are you listening to me? I heard another angel, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. In the midst of where? The heavens here, him flying in the midst of heaven speaks profoundly of the universality of the gospel, the universal nature of the claims of God, the universal nature of God's last call, the universal nature of God's everlasting truth. I don't care who is going to water down the truth of God. He has only one plan of salvation that he laid before he made the foundations of this world. It's obey and live, accept the will of God and live disobey and you shall die in every age he demonstrates his claims he demonstrates the gospel God knows how to fit the gospel to each generation but he has just one gospel and the last book of the Bible calls it the everlasting gospel can I testify if Adam and Eve made it through the pearly gates if Abel makes it in if Abel Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Isaac, Zebulun, Naphtali, God, Benjamin, Joseph, if the 12 sons of Jacob and their descendants, if the apostles make it in through the pearly gates, it will not be because of the blood of bullocks and rams and turtle doves. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their gifts. The only blood that can save us is the blood of Jesus Christ. But if you're saved by the blood, you've got to live in obedience to the one who gave his blood on Calvary's cross. Because Jesus never saved anybody to disobey the commandments of God. Are you listening to me? I saw him. He's flying in the midst of heaven. It speaks of the swiftness. God is in a hurry to get the gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. God, and I don't understand how some church members can sit on their big fat do nothing when God wants us all to do something. Be a witness for the Lord God. The word of God says, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, especially as you see the day approaching. We are approaching the second coming of Jesus. And he said, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Can I tell you that God wrote this long before COVID came and God knew that COVID would come, but so many of God's children have been afflicted with COVIDitis. I'm going to preach tonight whether you like it, yes or no. There's no salvation in church membership, not even in the remnant church. God is anxious to save a wicked world. There's bloodshed and murder and rape and drug pushing and domestic violence and broken families and broken lives and dashed hopes and broken dreams and twisted lives and young people growing up on the street with no father and no mother and lives drifting aimlessly and millionaires committing suicide because material possession and connections of earthly ties can give us what we need. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven, in the midst, in the midst, in the midst of heaven, flying. It speaks of the speed that God wants to get the message of hope to a dying world. It speaks of the centrality of God's concern. And hear me, members of the family of God, your primary concern ought to be God's number one priority. Whatever is uppermost on the mind of God, if you are walking in relationship with God, it has got to be your concern also. I saw, I saw 
John said, John, John, yes, John. John was there when Roman soldiers fastened his hands and feet with nails. John must have cried when they hung him up on the cross and with shame. And you ought to understand that, that the, the writers and the artists who paint the picture of Christ on the cross because they can't conceive of Christ being crucified without a single piece of garment. They made sure that the should they present to you have something wrapped around his mid area but let me tell you those Roman soldiers weren't Christians and they saw Jesus as a common criminal and Josephus said they crucified him without a single piece of garment on his body hear the word tonight John watch that as a matter of fact, after they buried him, the disciples got so disillusioned, they said, let's go back to our business. We're going back to our fishing. We're going back to our stuff. We trusted that it would have been he who should have redeemed us. But he died as a common criminal we are going back to fishing. We are going back to our stuff. We are going back. And even on the day that he was resurrected, he joined two of them as they walked the seven mile journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus and he's walking with them and he sees how despondent and dejected and discouraged and drained they were. He sees them as a man being dispossessed, disheveled and destroyed, bereft of every stuff and, and he walks with them and he asks, what are you talking about? And they said to him, we're talking about Jesus. The one we thought was our redeemer. We're talking about Jesus, the one who healed the sick and raised the dead and gave sight to the blind and gave speech to the dumb, the one, the one, the one, the one, and they recited all the things that Jesus did. But hear them, hear them, we trusted that he would have been the one who should have been our redeemer, but now he's dead, our hope. Dead. You know what he said to them? He said, Oh fools and slow of heart to believe, to believe, to believe. Have you heard? Do you believe it? Have you heard? Yes, they heard it. Oh fools and slow of heart to believe, to believe. And when he opened their eyes, the, the King James said, they ran back to Jerusalem. You can't keep still when, when, when your hope has been rekindled. So John, John watched not just his Savior died, but he watched him ascended. His hope was reborn. John watched the gospel and John watched all the disciples being martyred. Thomas had his brains bashed in. Matthew died, plunged through with the, And he watched and, and he watched and he was the only one left. And when they put him in a pot of boil, let me tell you something. Anything frightened God, picnic, he'll call. And if you ask before the paraphrase version, God's children, no freddy freddy. And they're not dead easy. And if God don't want me dead, ain't no power in hell that can kill me. If God doesn't want you dead, there's no power in hell that can take you out. They put him in a pot of boiling oil, but he came up saying, I worship only at the feet of Jesus. Are you listening to me? They banished him. Today, Patmos is a tourist attraction. Then, this little tiny island 50 miles south on the Aegean Sea was, was a place like the Fort Augusta prison, a place where only hideous criminals were sent. Every day, John would be working like the others, 
morning till night. A criminal banished and condemned because he heard what God says. He believed what God says. He lived what God says. Waiting for the moment when he would either see the coming of the Lord or close his eyes in death. John was fully sold out. Are you listening to me? And out there on Patmos, there was a day when John wouldn't do any work. And so he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The only Lord's day he knew was the one that Jesus kept, the one that Jesus blessed, the seventh day. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice behind me. And when I turned, I saw him and John described him. He said his feet like burnished bronze, his hair like pure wool. I saw him, the Messiah, the Savior, the King. I saw him and I heard him. And John said, I'm sharing with you what I heard. I saw an angel flying in the midst of heaven. There are two things here. The messenger, the Greek word for angel is the same word for messenger. And God is saying he has this special message that is heaven sent, that is central to the salvation of the people living in every island and continent. Can I tell you, before you drop dead, God go make sure you hear an invitation, at least one. We may not have equal number of days to repent. We may not have all the same knowledge, but do what you know. I said do what you know because it's dangerous to hear the voice of God and not obey it. I saw an angel. This, this message, he said, is universal. It's moving with speed. I used to wonder, how will God get the everlasting gospel to the whole world with a lazy church? A church that is more concerned about making a living than they are concerned about how to live. I used to wonder, how will God get this word? Because God says, this gospel shall be preached as a weakness. You may not accept it, but you can't tell God you never heard it. As a weakness to all people, to all kindred, to all nations, and then shall the end come. I used to wonder how God going to get it done. And then came COVID. And I stood right here in this little place. And when the guys did the YouTube measuring stuff, 42 million persons connected to this little place from right here. I said, God, if 42 million persons can connect to one little place, then if they are a thousand little places declaring the everlasting gospel and 42 million plus 42 million more times 40, listen to me therefore, God knew how lazy we would be. God knew how materially sensitive and tied up we would be. So God carved out the use of the internet that was always here, but we were never using it. God has to shut the world down. God has to lock us down, lock us out of church that we may bring the gospel to the whole world. God has to lock us out of church. Because when church was open, we come on in here quarreling anyhow, backbiting anyhow, slandering and gossiping, gossiping everything else except the gospel. So God says, my house was a house of prayer and worship, but you've made it a den of confusion and quarrel 
and you come on in showing off your suit and your shoes and your hat and your dress and you can't shout hallelujah because you're going to mess up your hairstyle. You're too cute to clap. You're too sanctified to shout. You're too holy to holler. So God says, I'm going to lock down the church and lock you out of church so you can get the gospel around the whole world. I saw... I saw, I saw an angel flying because God is anxious. Hear me, backslider. God is anxious to save you. Flying in the midst of heaven. Hear me, reverend. Hear me, bishop. God is anxious to get the gospel into your hard head. So an angel flying in the midst of heaven. It speaks of the universality of the gospel, the universality of the claims of God, the universality of the call to obedience, the universality of the call to repent, the universality of the call to surrender, the universality of the call to obey the commandments of God, the universality of the call to come back to the Bible. And he calls it the. He never said a gospel. If it's just a gospel, then any old thing can do. If I say to you, there are 14 pairs of shoes out there. Bring me the black one. It means I have a particular shoe in mind. Are you listening to me? Well, God's gospel is a peculiar gospel. It's a particular gospel. It tells us how to worship, and it tells us who to worship. It tells us when to worship. It tells us what to eat. It tells us how to live. It tells us how to dress. Are you listening to me? God has a particular, peculiar gospel. The man says, the man says, the man says, I look in the world and I saw the church mingled I couldn't make the difference and so I come to look in the church looking for the church I look in the world and I see the church in the world living like the world and I come and I look in the church and I see the world in the church for the church is looking like the world inside the church. Well, make me tell you something. God is in a selecting business. Call me weird, call me peculiar, call me, call me what you will. I saw the angel having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. He could have stopped there. Because when he said earth, it ought to at least convey, it means every one of us. But God is so peculiar. God is so particular. God no want you to feel that you left out. So he said, to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, Jamaica, Africa, Europe, Asia, to every nation, and just in case you think that you're in the nation, but somehow it doesn't belong to you. He said, to every kindred, to every culture, to every people. Now, I know there are some peculiar cultural stuff. But let me tell you something. I can, in Jamaica, tell them, say, now, now let me say it this way. I went down to a hotel to do a wedding for a friend of mine. So the wedding was supposed to be 3 o'clock. And I'm there. They told me where to go. I said the folk gathered. And then it's, it's a hotel that has, well, I don't want to call the hotel's name. So I got right in the place. I had the documents from, from the Ministry of Justice. And, and I had the documents that they have. And I'm standing there waiting for the folk to come. And some folk are standing there, and it was 3 o'clock, and I'm out in the sun. If you think I'm sweating now, you, you should have seen me then. And then I couldn't wait any longer. So I walked up. I said, where is the groom? And they said, 
We waited on you to start. And then he said, sir, I'm right here. You know what threw me off? All the persons before me have on blouse and skirt. And I'm cursing bad words. They have on skirts and blows. I'm standing there. They are Scottish people. They're in their Scottish attire, in their plaid skirt, in their cultural stuff. They all look alike. And I'm standing there using my Jamaican culture to impose on them. But me not go wear any plaid skirt come a church because God going to deal with the Scottish man based on his culture. Are you listening to me? When he writes up the judgment, the word of God says, he will say this man was born here and that man was born there. God takes a note of what you hear, what you know, where you live, the stuff you have, and God speaks to you where you are. Have you heard? Do you hear what I hear? John said, I heard. One, John, what did you hear? He says, I hear a loud voice. He's saying with a loud voice, fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him. Well, John, him who? The one who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. And outside of Revelation, the first place you find almost those identical words was when God Almighty himself got up from the throne of glory and he came down on Mount Sinai and he said, I am the Lord God. Thou shalt have no other God apart from me. Don't make unto yourself any graven images. Worship only the one who is his sovereign creator, the one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Where did he say it? He said it in the fourth commandment. Here is John. John is writing in the last book of the Bible. And John said, I heard it. It's a part of heaven's last message. It says, fear God and give glory to him and if you wonder which him then listen do you hear what i heard have you heard it it said the only one you must worship the only one you must give your full allegiance to the only one who deserves your total allegiance is the god who made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters, the sovereign creator. Listen to me. Anyone or anything that becomes nearer and dearer to you than God, that thing becomes your God. Why do you think I ask the anointed ones to sing for me? I worship only at the feet of Jesus. The only Savior I know is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And John said, without him was not anything made that was made. And so, have you heard what God has said? Have you heard what God is saying? And if you're hearing it, my next question is, do you understand what God is saying to you? Do you understand what you're hearing? John said, I heard in a loud voice. He's flying. He's moving swiftly. He's anxious to cover the islands of the Caribbean, the islands of the sea, the continents. He's anxious to cover north, south, east, and west. He is crying with a loud voice. Because some of us are hard of hearing. 
Some of us are so materialistically connected that God has to stand upside down to get us to listen. Have you heard? Do you hear what God has said? Sir, listening to me right there in that site at Mud Pen. Sir, you there, listen man, you right there in Santa Cruz, you right there in Westmoreland, you right there in Junction, you right there in Nickville, you right there in Sheffield, you right there in Marchtown, you right there where you are, you right there in South Brooklyn, you right there in Stuyvesant, you right there, have you heard what God is saying? in his word and if you hear it do you understand it well let me help you understand worship is our highest allegiance to God worship belongs only to the sovereign God who creates the heavens and the earth the sea and the fountain of water it means whatever he says to you ought to take precedence and priority above and beyond everything else. It means when God calls you, you ought not to delay. You ought not to dilly-dally. It means if he is sovereign creator, he can fix whatever is wrong in your life. Do you understand it? Do you understand it? That you ought not to allow anything you fear to displace the claims of God. Hear me, young man. Do you hear what God's saying to you? Do you understand the urgency? I wish I had time to get into the second part of this, this message because it speaks of the issue of religious plurality it speaks of the issue of religious confusion it speaks of the issue and let me run there quickly and take five it says there followed another angel saying now it's interesting that the both message john says he is saying something he is saying something he's moving swiftly but he is saying something he's saying something to you he's saying something to you and he's saying it with a loud voice and when God screams at us he's desperate and trying to get our attention and there followed another angel saying Babylon is fallen is fallen by the way when John was writing, the ancient city of Babylon had long since fallen. Remember I, talk, I walked you through history? Babylon was the first kingdom. It fell, then came Media Persia. That fell, then came Greece. That fell, then came Rome. So John was writing at the time when the final kingdom is ruling the world. What does he mean then by the phrase, Babylon is fallen. He uses Babylon as a code name. And we still do that. What do you call the police? Same thing they know. By the way, you know, by the way, uh -uh, this minibus was going from to Kingston from Westmoreland. Pastor Simeon Essen was, was sitting in the front seat. And, and uh, so there's, there's a police officer who the driver picked up. And, and maybe that was the only reason he could have two persons in the front seat with him. So, so it's Essen is in the middle seat and the policeman is at the window and the driver is at the other window. You know, drivers have a way. I never flash my light to tell anybody when a policeman or, or, or a roadblock. I used to do it, but I stopped. You know, one day I'm coming out from the airport. I turn on Leaders Avenue and somebody flashed me. I'm coming right up to Davis Avenue. And somebody flashed the light. And I heard behind me, Aah! there was a car behind me, dark glasses. 
You know those dark glasses, not just at the windows, but even at the front. And there's a law that says that I think they, there ought to be at least 18 clear inches between your dark tint at the top and at the bottom. Well, he just had a peep hole and he drew brakes, spun around and headed in the other direction. I said to myself, if you never have something to hide, you wouldn't draw a break suddenly. And it means that maybe you have a gun and they warn you and you may take the life of the very person. Who, so I don't, I'd rather help you pay the ticket or come to prison and visit you with breakfast with dumpling and ackee and saltfish. So, 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 so the, the, the bus is on its way and, and, and minibus drivers, when there's a roadblock, a road check, they're lighting each other. And, and he, he flicked the light and slowed and said, Babylon up the saw. Driver said, thank you, man. Here comes the next one. Babylon down there. Thank you, man. Here comes the next one. Babylon down there. Thank you, man. And so the driver now started to make sure that all the passengers, if they have anything to hide and stuff like that. And when the fourth one comes up and say, Babylon up there. The policeman took out his badge and said to the driver, one in here too, you know. And he didn't light anybody else or say anything. When John used the term Babylon, it was a code name to represent religious confusion. You see, in Genesis 11, after God said he would not destroy the earth by flood, here comes Nimrod and his descendants of unbelievers, and they didn't trust God, so they said, let us build a tower whose top may reach to heaven. You know what it means? They were doing salvation by human effort. They mean just in case we hear what God says. We hear God says there shall be no more flood. But we can't trust him. Let's build us a tower. Let's, let's, let's work out our own salvation. Let's build our own truth. Let's build our own doctrine. Let's build our own defense. You can build a defense against God. And God comes down and confounded their language and the Tower of Babel, symbols, confusion. He scattered them across the earth and John uses the terminology to represent religious confusion. There are so many churches and we claim to have the same Bible. There's so many denominations and we claim to follow the same Bible all because we do not hear what God is saying. Have you heard what God says? He said the only God you must worship is the one who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Have you heard? And if you hear, do you understand? It means that if God could create the world from nothing, when you have to obey him, whatever you've got to sacrifice and let go, he who made the world from nothing can make something beautiful of your nothingness. Do you understand the call? Do you understand the word of God? He says, fear God and give glory to him. Worship him because the hour of his judgment is come. And I close my Bible. There's a card in my hand tonight that they should have used earlier, but I'm going to use it right now. And I'm going to ask the ushers to put a card in every man's hand tonight. It's called the prayer circle card. They should have used it earlier. And I think every site has a copy. Have you heard? Do you hear? Do you hear what God is saying? He's saying the hour of his judgment. Investigative judgment, the preeminent judgment is circling the globe, is, is actively involved and God is anxious. A message circling the earth and circling the globe and going to every nation, kindred, tongue and people. Do you hear? And if you hear, 
Have you heard? And if you heard it, do you understand? And if you understand it, my question tonight, what are you doing about it? Son, take me down to Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah 7 and verse 23 said, And this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Hear God. Hear. This is the essence of the everlasting gospel. This thing I command them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Being a child of God is conditional on your willingness to obey what God says. Have you heard? I ask you again, have you heard? And if you have heard, do you understand it? Do you understand that God is in a hurry? Do you understand that you must worship no other excepting the one who made the heavens and the earth? Do you understand what worship means? Worship is your highest allegiance to God. It means you are willing to say, Lord, yes to your will and to your way. It means that whatever God says you're willing to do, it means that when he calls you to surrender, even if you have to walk away from a job, he who made the world from nothing can make something beautiful of your nothingness. It means the call to repentance, the call to baptism is urgent. It's flying in the midst of heaven. It's dethroning the doctrines of men, exalting the doctrine of the Lord God, the sovereign creator. I'm done, but hear the card tonight. It says, I believe God answers prayer. And I need prayer. And there are four areas there. I'm going to read them for you. I'm going to read them for you. Borrow a pen. Borrow a pencil. Get something. It says, number one, my family needs. There are four areas, four broad areas. And under each area, there are some statements. Number one, I'm having relationship challenges. If you're having a family breakdown, if you lose your parents and you lose your children and you lose your husband and you lose your wife, for God's sake, don't lose your soul. I'm having relationship challenges. I'm having marital problems. I'm having parental challenges. She sings softly, whatever it is, Put a mark there, put an X there. If you don't have a pen, hold up your hand and, and they'll get one to you. And I'm gonna make sure the next time we hand you a card, we hand you a pen, we hand you a pencil, we hand you something you can use to write. There are hands being held up. I'm gonna ask you to lend them a pen, lend them something they can use to write. The next statement, the next statement. I need prayer because I have some spiritual needs. There are three statements under this one. It says, I need to repent and be baptized. Pray for me. I need to repent. With the everlasting gospel going to the ends of the earth, I need to repent. With the urgency of the word of God flying in the midst of heaven, I need to repent. With the angels saying with a loud voice, I've heard it. I understand it. I sense the urgency with it. I need to repent and be baptized. The second statement under my spiritual need says, I'm a Christian, but need a closer walk with God. I want to go to the next level. I'm a Christian, but I need a closer walk with God going to the next level. You want to put a mark there. You want to put an X there. The third one says, the third one says, I'm a backslider. I'm a backslider. And I need to recommit my life to Jesus in rebaptism. There's a card on your screen. Scan that QR code. Scan that QR code. Scan that quick response code. There is, there is a decision card there. But this one said, I'm a backslider. And I need to recommit my life to Jesus in rebaptism. If you've wandered from the church, come on back. If you are standing at any of those sites, if you don't have the card I'm using, ask them to give you something. You can make a mark, you can write your name on. But tonight, in an urgency, tonight, in an urgency, 
attached to the gospel. Take the card tonight. Fill the card out. Fill the card out. In the name of Jesus. Fill the card out. Fill the card out. With an angel. With a message. The last message. Flying in the midst of heaven. It's the everlasting gospel. The same gospel that God gave. Fear God. Eve responded to the serpent and put the words of the serpent above the words of God. But the Lord God comes to you and you and you and he comes to me. He said, listen, it's time to put God first in your life. Whatever he says to you, do it, do it now, do it now, do it now. This weekend, this weekend is your baptism. This weekend is your baptism. This weekend is the time to change your life. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Put him first. Obey what he says. Do you understand it? Then I tell you, it's dangerous to hear it or not obey. I go back to Jeremiah chapter 7, and I'm done on this one. Jeremiah chapter 7. Let me read, let me read for you. Come on, son, work with me. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, the seventh chapter. And we began reading verse 23. I'm going to go to verse 24. Well, let me go to my own Bible. Jeremiah 7, 23, 24. I'm going to my own Bible. I'm going to my own Bible. Hear the word of God tonight. Hear the word, hear the word. Hear the word of the living God. I mean, I'm looking for the seventh chapter of the book of Jeremiah. I got to read to you. Hear what he says. Hear what he says. This thing I command them saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. What is the condition? And our be he said, obey my voice. I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk, watch this now, walk in all of the ways that I command you. Not in some of the commandments, but in all of the ways. Look at verse 24. But they didn't listen. They didn't obey. They walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their own heart. Look at verse 27. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words to them, but they will not hear you. They will not listen. Verse 28. But thou shalt say, this is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of God. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. I wish I could go to the end. Well, I still have two minutes. Revelation chapter 14. You know what the verses between what I read and the end of the chapter says? There are two feasts. There are two reaping. The first one, he said, I'm going to go read it for you. The first one, he said, I heard a voice comes out of the temple. I saw one sitting on the cloud. And the voice said, thrust in your sickle and reap the harvest of the earth. Sin has reached its zenith. Thrust in your sickle. The gospel has been carried to the ends of the earth, thrust in your sickle. And he that sat on the cloud, Revelation 14, 16, thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. The earth was reaped. The grapes were the kingdom, but it's not done. And another angel came out from the temple. He had power over fire. He cried aloud to him with a sharp sickle. Thrust in thy sharp sickle. Gather the clusters of the vine. The angel thrust in his sickle. Gathered the vine of the earth. Cast it in the great wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the wine press up to the horse's bridle. John uses a description that his hearers could understand. He said, when God's wrath is through, I see blood covering the earth. Fear God. Surrender before it's too late. I have one minute to close. 
Fear God. Surrender before it's too late. Hear me, nations of the earth. Hear me from this platform. It's not what your pastor says. It's not what the bishop says. It's not what the reverend says. It's not what Glenn Samuel says. It's what the Lord God says in the Bible. Have you heard it? Do you understand it? What are you doing about it? It's dangerous to hear God and disobey. I'm done. It's 829. Would you stand with me while we pray? Would you stand with me? If you filled out the cards, turn them in. Turn them in. It's 829. This coming Saturday, this weekend, is your baptism. Backslider, come on back. You who have never surrendered your heart to Jesus, come on back. Let us pray, Almighty God. We've heard your voice, Lord Jesus. And the obedient ones, our hearts, are responding tonight. We pledge you our allegiance to your cause, to your will. We pray that you'll help us to surrender our all. When the kingdoms of this world shall become your kingdom, because we have heard the everlasting gospel, because we understand, God, that you are the only one whom we must worship, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who say, obey and live, disobey and die, we come tonight. We ask for mercy and grace. We pray, God, for every backslider who needs to come back. We pray, God, for every honest heart who need to make that decision tonight for baptism this weekend. Have your own way, we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, may the grace of Almighty God be with you. But it's 8.30 and I'm done. I'll see you on Friday night, there's be no meeting tomorrow night. We'll see you on Friday evening. But on Friday morning, join me. Join me around the world as we lift our hearts. If you can't do the full half day in fasting and prayer, in joining me in prayer, if you can only spend two hours, then I beg you in the name of Jesus, let's spend two hours in prayer. If you can do from 6 to 8 or from 8 to 10, we speak to nations. The kingdom is coming. May God be with you, the host, and then my song. Love you with the love of Jesus, and I'll see you on Friday night. Bless the name of the Lord. Denise, Amen. one more time, we've heard the everlasting gospel, Amen. and you've heard it. And because we've heard it, then we're going to accept him and make him our savior. What a day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And we just want to thank our viewing friends for joining us tonight. This was a very inspirational, potent message for the end time. And, of course, join us on Friday night at 6.30 for another powerful message from the throne of God. So on behalf of the entire production team, right here at West Jamaica Conference online worship experience platform, and of course, Footprints of Hope, we want to thank you for joining us. And remember, please subscribe and share that link. Right now, we will be going over to the Foster Triplets. Goodbye. Hear the sound, the sound of the nations calling. Hear the sound, the sound of the fathers crying. Who will go for? Corners of the earth that cry.